Welcome to the KO Boxing Show. Tonight's show, we come from the Sofitel here in Manila. And it's a rotary meeting. Manny Pacquiao is a special guest. Hopefully, we're going to interview Manny Pacquiao. In the background is boxing. It's one of the most popular sports here in the Philippines. And a lot of people can kind of, um, what's the word? They're familiar with boxing because it's a sport that gives everyone a chance to, uh, to achieve greatness. And you can come from poverty and... Uh, end up supporting your family and people around here. So uh, we're going to some interviews here from the uh, Grand Ballroom at the Sofitel in Manila. Back at the Grand Ballroom in Manila with none other than Mr. Boxing here in Asia, Ronnie Nathaniels. Ronnie, you were behind Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier, Thriller in Manila. Now you've... Uh, experience another phenomenon and that's Manny Pacquiao. We look behind here, there's just photos and paintings on him everywhere. Wherever I go in Manila, just Manny Pacquiao. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's a phenomenal fighter and he's brought so much uh, pride and joy to Filipinos and that's why he's so popular because, you know, eight uh, belts, eight world titles, eight different weight divisions, phenomenal. And I saw him first as a 16 or 17 year old kid his first fight in Manila, the third fight in his career, on a show I did called Blow by Blow, which I produced and uh, I anchored many times with Kinito Henson. And then I did it for my good friend, the late Rod Nazario, who was actually the father spirit behind the Manny Pacquiao. And it was great to see him grow from that fighter. He, was, he had two, two attributes, Peter. He had courage and he could hit. He had awesome power. But he had no finesse at all. And... In my wildest dreams, I never thought Manny will win just one world title, but eight world titles. Never dreamed in my wildest dreams he'll be able to do it, but he did it. And the story behind Manny Pacquiao is that he was a poor boy. He came from, from abject poverty to overcome uh, the challenges he faced and became a really superstar. He's a superstar. He's also a movie star here. He's a rock star. He sings. He's anything he can't do. Yeah, there's nothing he cannot do. And he plans to run for president when he's eligible in 2022. In fact, he told me uh, some time ago, he said, I'm going to pray for you, Ronnie, so that you will live long enough to see me take my oath as president. Well, who knows? Anything can happen. Ronnie, let's go over the state of Filipino boxing because it's very healthy. There's also Nanito Dornere, who is a superstar in his own right. Yes, I was with Nonito earlier today at church. You know, he's getting married on uh, November 11th. He's got a fight on f November 5, six days before. He says, that's not a problem. I can handle that. And then, of course, he's looking forward to a big fight in the middle of January when he'll fight the winner of Toshiaki Nishioka versus Rafael Marquez. And he thinks that's going to be a sensational fight. And I think so, too. So if he gets by the November guest, the opponent, rather, that Bob Adam has lined up for him, then... We should see a great fight. And he's moving up to 122, so that's going to be his fourth world title. So he's getting there because he's aiming for six. Unbelievable. Ronnie, let's go over your experiences with a great Muhammad Ali. You were, uh, you were his chaperone when he fought Joe Bugnan. You, you were his chaperone when he fought Joe Frazier. Uh, you said one time Ali said, I'm going to grab a gun and see Joe Frazier. You, you thought he was mucking around, but he wasn't. Let us in about that story. Well, actually, he was joking. He took a toy gun and went and woke up Joe Frazier, who was living at the Hyatt Regency Hotel, he kept screaming from down below. And then when Joe Frazier couldn't stand it, came out of the balcony, he pointed the gun, I'm going to shoot you, I'm going to shoot you. But of course, he was just kidding. And he got into a little trouble there because that time was martial rule. And you can't carry a gun. You know, you couldn't carry a gun. So he got in a little bit of trouble, but everybody knew it was a joke. And he laughed, he laughed and laughed the next day when we discussed about it. And he thought... He got into Joe, under Joe Frazier's skin. That's exactly what he did. He got into his mind, he got him under his skin, and then he put him away in that 14th round. Was that the greatest fight you've ever seen, Ronnie, the thriller in Manila? It has to rank as one of the greatest fights of all time, especially in the heavyweight division. We are not used to seeing heavyweights fight in person. And, you know, Muhammad Ali is Muhammad Ali. He was the greatest of all time. So that was probably the greatest fight I ever saw. But I think, to me, the greatest fight I ever saw uh, involved a Filipino, the late Gabriel Flash Alorde, when he fought Ismael Laguna in uh, Araneta Coliseum. Laguna was the former lightweight champion of the world, and that was one tremendous fight. 
non-stop action. It was a 10-round non-title fight. Laguna went down twice. I think in the third round and the ninth round enabled Elote to win. But after that fight, they both left so much in the ring that their careers went down. Ronnie, um, just two more questions. Will the Mayweather with the Manny Pacquiao fight ever happen? I seriously doubt whether that will happen because of the circumstances. You never know what Mayweather is thinking. You never know what Mayweather is doing. Now, his uncle says, if the fight goes through, he wants Pacquiao to train in the United States, not in the Philippines. That's a ridiculous, a ridiculous claim. He's a Filipino. He wants to train in the Philippines. He trains two weeks in the US, US and, and, and uh, four weeks in the US and four weeks here. So you cannot make such ridiculous demands, which tells me that they don't want to fight. But my sneaking suspicion is that Mayweather wants to see whether Manny Pacquiao is slipping. Watching his performance, the moment he feels that Manny Pacquiao is slipping and he can take him, he'll say yes. Okay, final question. We're talking to Mr. The Asian boxing journalist here, Ronnie Nathaniels. Ronnie, uh, Manny Pacquiao, Marquez, November. How do you see this fight panning out? I think uh, Marquez is going to bite a little more than he can chew in this particular fight. Pacquiao is too strong. He's, he's fighting at 144, and I don't think Mar uh, Marquez is comfortable at that weight. He's good at 130, 135 pounds, and he has slowed down. Marquez has slowed down. And uh, he gets hit much easier now. I saw Katsidis fight him. Katsidis was right in front of him and hit him a number of times. And he does not punch as hard as he used to punch because I think age is taking, taking its toll on him and he's had some tough fights. So I think Manny is going to put him away after five or six rounds. Thank you for your time, Ronnie Nathaniel. world champion, eight division world champion, Manny the Pac-Man Pacquiao. Welcome to the KO Boxing Show. Hello, hi. Manny, we've interviewed you many times. You've uh, now shot past greatness. You're, you're a successful politician and uh, you're making a lot of inroads here in the Philippines with, with your political push. Yes, and um, I just want to help people. Manny, let's, let's go into that. Um, you, you know, a lot of people are saying that for over, when you turn over 40 years of age, you're going to be the next president of the Philippines. How do you feel about that? No, I'm, <laughs> I'm not um, thinking about that, about the, the next position. I'm just uh, focused and concentrating my, my position right now as a congressman and what I can help them. Manny, you were recently in Sydney, Australia. What did you like about Sydney? Oh, Sydney, Australia is a very nice place, and it's good to to, uh, to relax there. And people there are very um, um, nice and very very uh, friendly. What about the accent? Like, good day, mate. Did you get a lot of that? Yes, good day, Mike. And what? How are you today? <laughs> how are you today? All right, Manny. You got Marquez in November. He's been your bogey man. He's the closest guy, really, that's it's come to giving you trouble. How's your training been? When do you start training? It's going to be a hard fight, isn't it? So, um, yeah, it's it, it, it's 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 a hard fight, but um, I have to train hard for this fight, and I think uh, it's we've been uh, fighting uh, two times uh, with Marquez, so I know his style, and I I will uh, I will study I will study his style. Okay, okay. What do you expect from Marquez? Do you expect him to to counter punch you? Well. I expect him uh, um, uh, the best Marquez on that night, and and he will train hard for this fight. So um, I will prepare for that. Okay, Manny. Just a few key questions because you know you're very very busy here. Um, boxing. How long do you plan to keep doing this sport? Because it's a vigorous sport, and you, you've got politics, you've got kids. There's other things in your life now. How long do you feel you can keep doing this? Really, the most brutalist sport in the world. Um, actually, right now, you know, I'm not gonna stay long in, in boxing. In couple fights, and we'll stop boxing and focus on uh, to serve people. 
okay. Obviously, the main fight the whole world wants to see is Floyd Mayweather. Are we ever going to see this fight? Um, there's a big possibility by next year between me and Mayweather, the fight will be post draw. Maybe next year. Maybe next year you could be fighting Floyd Mayweather. That would that excite you more than anything in the whole world to fight Floyd Mayweather? Because you know, you pan your gloves together. You're a fighter, Manny, and you know he's the guy that's going to separate you from greatness. And we know every time there's a big challenge, you did it with De La Hoya, you did it with Cotto, you did it with Hatton, you do it with Marquez, you do it with everyone. Barrera, Morales, is he the one that you want? that can actually be the crown on top of the cap? Um, actually, you know, I'm satisfied with my, all my achievements in boxing, in, in, in boxing and in, um, if, you, if you fight me, I'm okay. I'm ready to fight and if you're not, if not, nothing to worry because, you know, I mean, I, I don't really need him in my, in my career. All right, Manny, one last question. What's been your greatest moment in the sport of boxing? When have you been the happiest inside the ring when you thought, what was your favourite moment? What world title? What was the moment? The moment when I, if I, um, I, fight, I fought um, Oscar De La Hoya because I was... Um, uh, De, De La Hoya on that time, is, he's a big, big favour and I was an underdog. Is it true your first fight you were that light, 98 pounds at 16 years of age, you put lead in your shorts to make 105 minimum weight? I'm sorry? When you were your first fight at 16, you were that light, you had to put weights in your pants to come in at 105. Is that true? Yes. Wow, there's a fighter. Young kids out there, if you want to be like Manny Pacquiao, this guy put lead in his pants <laughs> to, to fight, and that's what a fighter does. Manny, you're a class act. Thank you. You're not only you're, you're the pound for pound king, but you're the people's champion. Thanks for being on the KO Boxing Show. Thank you very much, and to all the, the viewers, thanks. I'm here in Manila with none other than Ted Luna, Ring Magazine journalist and ring announcer. Second, not really, just as good as Michael Buffer. Ted, why is uh, boxing so popular here in the Philippines? Well, first of all, boxing has a, a long history in the Philippines, and it's just, I think at its core, it resonates with the people because, you know, guys come from poor backgrounds, and it's a way out of poverty. I mean, it's that, it's, it sounds like a cliche, but in the Philippines, it's really true. As you know, guys come from the, the places where it's, they're poor as dirt, and they use their fists and their courage and their determination to rise out of poverty and make themselves a better life and their family a better life. That's the universal story, but in a place like the Philippines, it seems to have an extra, extra something special to it, that story. And, and Filipinos like fighters, you know, they, they like the Manny Pacquiao's of the world. Actually, they don't really like scientific boxers so much. You could have the finest scientific boxer in the world and they won't, they, they might boo, but they like fighters. They like blood and guts, go for broke kind of fighters. So that's what, that's what they get, and that's why they like boxing so much. You're Manny Pacquiao's ring announcer. You've announced him here in the Philippine, Philippines many times. What, when you announce him, does he seem nervous in a ring, or is he always pretty much looks like he's got the eye of the tiger? Oh, Manny always has the eye of the tiger. You know Manny's always coming out to kick some butt. That's what that is. He's the epitome of what I just said in the answer to your last question. That's what they love in a fighter. A guy who comes out, and I always said this about Pacquiao, you know, he takes his fist and he goes like this, right? He says, come on, bring it on. Oh, that drives people wild. They love that. And then not only does he say, bring it on, then he kicks some butt when, he, when the guy brings it on. Well, that, it's the ultimate. I mean, Pacquiao is the ultimate for a Filipino fan. It doesn't get any better than that. All right, Ted, thanks for your time. Thank you, Peter. Welcome to the Philippines. And, you know, you're always, you're always a big hit here. We love having your show here in the Philippines because it's a great show and you do it right. So that's why you're popular here. So thanks for coming. We're here with Jennifer Ortiz. Jennifer, some great paintings here from Manny Pacquiao. How popular is he here in the Philippines? He's very popular and he's a very nice person and... 
he's giving all his money for just for helping people and that. Do you think he's a good singer though? Yes, he's a good singer, but he's a good boxy boxer also. Okay, Jennifer, thank you for your time. Thank you. Back with Jenki Pacquiao, the wife of Manny Pacquiao. Jenki, welcome to the KO Boxing Show. Hi, hello. Jenki, you're a mother of four. It must be hard being a mother of four and your husband's a boxer. Yes, um, I have four children. Uh, the ages is 10, 9, 4, and 3. Wow, wow, a happy family. Tell us how you met Manny Pacquiao. Um, I met him when I was working as a beauty consultant in, uh, in Pond's product uh, in a mall in Jensen. Yes. Wow, how old were you, were you and how old was Manny? Were you just young teenagers? Uh, he is um, uh, 19 years old at the time. That was a uh, year 1998. Yeah. Was it love at first sight? Not exactly, but uh, maybe because of uh, we always are going together, eat, uh, eat outside together, yeah, getting to know each other better. So maybe that's why. You do a lot of projects yourself, Jenki, here. You're very popular. I see you on billboards. You, uh, it must be hard being a mother of four, also, uh, you know, catering to your husband and also doing side projects yourself. You must be fairly busy yourself. Yeah, um, I am endorsing a beauty clinic right now. It's a Bello, Bello Medical Group. So I'm happy um, they choose me as an endorser. And then I have a business too, I'm busy. Um, that's it, yeah. You met Paris Hilton in Las Vegas. What was it like meeting Paris Hilton? Yeah, it's like a dream come true because I only um, saw her in a magazine and now it's... It's um, uh, personal, so um, I'm happy and I'm flattered that we met and then uh, we, we text each other. So, wow, become friends with Paris Hilton, uh, Jenki. What do you? What are some of the feelings you feel when Manny's fighting in the ring? Do you get very scared? Do you get excited? What are the feelings that go through your mind? Um, it's uh, mixed emotions. It's uh, uh, I feel excited, uh, scared, and. Uh, um, yeah, I'm scared and excited. What type of training do you do, Jenki? Because you're fairly fit yourself. Do you do boxing? Does Manny teach you how to box? No, no, no. I'm on a diet right now because I'm endorsing a beauty clinic. So I want to feel uh, good, look good, and uh, and uh, uh, skinny. I, I, I want more skinny. So. Okay, you recently went to Australia where we're coming to you guys uh, and you stayed in Sydney. How was Sydney? Did you enjoy Sydney? Yeah, we enjoyed Sydney. Uh, we stayed there for five days. Yeah, we go around and the kids are happy. Did you see any koalas or kangaroos or did you yeah. go to the zoo? Yes, we went to the zoo and then we saw the koala bears. Yeah. What did you think? Did you like the Australian animals and the Australian culture? Yeah, yeah, of course. I like the, I like the city, most especially the, the, the Opera House, yeah. Can we host you back in Melbourne one time? We're from Melbourne. Yeah, we hope so, in Melbourne, yeah. All right, Chanky, thank you for your time appearing on the KO Boxing Show, and good luck with all your ventures, and obviously going to stay busy doing. You've got a lot of things on your plate as well, and uh, bringing up four children as well. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Here at the Grand Ballroom with none other than WBA international referee Silvestre Abienza. Silvestre, you've refereed many great fighters, including Manny Pacquiao. What was it like to interview to referee Manny Pacquiao? Yeah, I refereed Manny Pacquiao uh, at the Lunenta uh, result, that was result Park, uh, but an untitled fight between uh, uh, Russian and Manny Pacquiao, and Manny Pacquiao won that uh, by uh, technical knockout. And uh, I refer most all of the fight of Manny Pacquiao when he, when he was young. Who is the best boxer you've ever refereed? Is Manny the best boxer you've ever refereed? 
Yeah, of course, Mali Pacquiao, of course. One of the best fighters in the world. One of the finest fighters in the world. You, uh, you do a lot of WBA assignments. Um, what are some of the recent WBA? You did a WBA world title fight recently with Mohamed Rachman in, in Indonesia. Tell us about that. Yeah, I was one of the judge, uh, judges for Rachman fight against Ponsawat in uh, Indonesia. And he won by... Uh, uh, he lost. He lost. He lost by... Uh, uh, majority decision because one of the judges uh, is Corpo Eben, and other two judges was Corpo uh, one. All right, thank you for your time, Sylvester. Enjoy the night. Thank you, and good day, mate. We're here again at the ballroom with uh, Carlos Costa, who's an international boxing journalist. Carlos, you're at all the events, uh, South American boxers, they've got a lot of passion, haven't they? Absolutely, absolutely. Latin American boxers in general and, and also the fans are very passionate. They, they are very much into it all over from Argentina, Mexico, Panama. We really love the sport. Same as you. Roberto Duran was a famous man from uh, your part, part of the woods. Yes, yes, Roberto Duran, yeah, from Panama, from our hometown. He's a, he's a hero and also he's a very, very nice person. One of our great champions. Who are some of the big names coming out of uh, South American boxing? From all South America, oh, we have so many, so many champions all over Mexico, Panama. Uh, right now in Panama, precisely, we have uh, Celestino Caballero, probably you remember, and also Anselmo Chemito Moreno. We also have uh, Luis Elnica Concepcion and other fighters also. In Mexico, well, you know, they are all, uh, all kinds of, uh, of good fighters. And uh, the, the fans, the people who like boxing, they are always very entertained because they are always good new people, new new fighters, new young people who love the sport and come to the arenas to fight and show the best of the sport of boxing. Filipino boxing, how do you write the standard here? It's a good, absolutely. Not only Manny Pacquiao, but there are many. Well, you went, uh, I saw you last Saturday there in Cebu, in the other city. Now we are in Manila. Uh, AJ Banal, he fought very good. He's uh, ranked in the four organizations. Also, Milan Melindo will be fighting very soon. Of course, the king, who everybody loves, is uh, Manny Pacquiao, of course. But there used to be others before, like Jerry Peñalosa, like Flash Elorde, Pancho Villa, you know. And now, Nonito Donaire is also a very good fighter uh, that people really like. We would like to see Nonito Donaire with Anselmo Moreno. He's a very good champion, you know. Uh, because it would be a nice idea to unify the Bantamweight Championships. Probably that will happen, probably yes, probably no. Let's hope so, and let's hope to see more of Nonito Donaire from the Philippines. Thank you for your time, Carlos. Wrapping up the KO Boxing Show from the Grand Ballroom in Manila. Hasn't it been a big show interview? Manny Pacquiao, Jenky Pacquiao. It's been a great show, so till next week, keep punching.